Whew, it's been a while. It's been 84 years. It does feel like it was that long, but no, I didn't join a circus, and no, I wasn't stranded on a desert island. Things just got busy at home and around the church, and something had to give. And that thing, it was YouTube. You know, when I first started on YouTube, I was publishing videos twice a week, and I loved it. I loved the research, the filming. I even loved the editing. I loved it all, and I still do. But things were different four years ago. You know, in the last four years, my kids have grown from two babies and a toddler to two preschoolers and a kid that just finished the first grade. And my wife's responsibilities at her work, they've also greatly increased because she's an absolute rock star, if I'm just being honest. And in the last four years, the church that I helped found in Central Texas has grown from 100 to 1,000 and from three staff members to 10 staff members. I say all of that to say that my responsibilities changed quite a bit and therefore my life had to pivot. So when things change and you know you need to make a life pivot, how do you know which direction to go? I think it's one thing, priorities. Now we've all heard people over the years talk about priorities. You may have even rolled your eyes when I said the word, but I wanna talk about it in a way that I hope is different in a way that will take it from a tired cliche to true clarity. You've probably heard it said that you should write out the major areas of your life and then rank them in order from most important to least important and then make decisions according to that metric. And that's all true. But the problem with that is it leaves out a lot of nuance and fuzziness. I mean, things just aren't that clear cut, but I am getting a bit ahead of myself there. We do need to categorize the big areas of our life and then rank them in importance. Things like family, God, work, etc. And with this list, we then put them in a proper order and then make adjustments accordingly in life. Jesus even used what we would call priority language in his Sermon on the Mount. He told people who had real concerns about food and clothing to, yes, seek those things, but not seek them first. He said that we should seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of those things, the need to provide for yourself food and clothing specifically, all those things will be provided for you. So if you're a Christian, God has to be first on your list. That is the number one priority. But even in what Jesus said there, we see a little nuance. He said, seek God first and all of these things will be provided. Do you see how there's a connection there between the first priority and the lower priorities? You see, life isn't so easily separated into neat containers. Instead, things are really connected to one another. So let's move on to number two so that I can illustrate. God, then family, number three, work. Now that shouldn't be a very controversial list for most people. Here are the connections. God, putting him first, that bleeds into how we treat our family and our work ethic. You see, number one connects to numbers two and three. But you would think that a higher priority would affect the lower priorities. But it also works the other way around. If we want to prioritize our family, we must make sure that they're provided for. So family at number two can't completely crush number three, or number two also falls apart. And if you send off your family and quit your job so that you can read your Bible all day, well, that wouldn't work either. You would actually dishonor God, your number one priority, by doing so. There must be an appropriate balance here. We seek God first, and that influences our family and our work. We love our family dearly, and that honors God and gives our work purpose. We work hard at work that also honors God, and it provides for our family. See, those priorities work with one another and should complement one another. And that works for your other priorities as well, your volunteering, your hobbies, your recreation, etc. I think we all get that they should complement each other to give us a good, God-honoring life. Where things get hard is when they start not complementing, but conflicting. Maybe God points out something unethical at work and there's a, there's a conflict there. Maybe the boss is keeping you in the office too long and your family suffers conflict. Maybe your husband wants you to binge a TV show late every night and that's affecting your work and your time with God. Again, that is a conflict. So how do we deal with these conflicts? Well, first, know that you'll always have to make adjustments and tweaks in your life. You will never ever strike such a perfect balance that you'll never have to make a course correction. Second, 
Appropriate balance means different things in different seasons. The way I prioritize my family now is different than when my kids were younger and it will be different for when my kids are older or even when they're out of the house. There's a constant act of rebalancing. Likewise, during times of a family crisis, my family will need me a lot more and I'll have to rebalance very quickly. But hey, if they're at their grandparents for a week, they're gonna need me a lot less. You see how that balance always changes? And third, balance isn't literal, it's relative. We all have 24 hours in a day. And if we take out eight of that for sleep, that gives us 16 hours. If we then divide that by three, we evenly split our time between God, family, and work about five hours and 20 minutes each. That's not counting commute or cooking or showering or any of the necessities. That's just five hours and 20 minutes. None of those extra things included. You know that wouldn't work. No, balance is relative. For most of us, we spend eight hours at work and let's give ourselves an a eight hours of sleep. It's very generous. Well, that leaves us with about eight hours a day left for God and family, our number one and our number two priorities. So how do we square this? Well, with God, we spend 15, 30, 45 minutes with Him in the morning before we start our day, but we don't end it there. We then walk with God throughout our day. We have an ongoing conversation with God in our minds through prayer. Maybe we listen to worship music at the gym or a Christian podcast on our commute. You see, we have a focused time with God early and then a life that walks with Him throughout every part of our day. With our family, we spend time in the morning together if we're lucky and then time in the evenings together. And yes, that time is pretty brief throughout the work week. But then we have a weekend with no work and lots of family time. Are the seven days of the week perfectly balanced? No, but we make the weekends count. We make sure we get enough quantity of time together so that we end up having good quality time. You see, priority isn't about the duration of time, it's about its significance in life. Now, do those things often correlate? Yeah, but sometimes they don't. You see, knowing our priorities isn't strictly about delegating out our time, but helping decide a winner when there's a prolonged or a significant conflict between two things that we value. It's okay when things are temporary off balance, but if that goes on too long, our life begins to go off track. Let me give you an example. I have loved playing video games as a hobby since I was a kid, and during some portions of my life, they took up a significant amount of time. Now, I'm not saying that's a good thing, but I am saying that is the truth. As work and as family took up more and more of my capacity, I had to give something up, and that thing was video games. To use a competition analogy, video games were on the bubble, the lowest thing on my list, and then it was bumped off. When it first happens, you hate it, you're bummed, but then you realize that you only have so much capacity. You can only do so much, and that you made the right choice. You've made a strategic pivot, a decision based on what was truly most important. Can I tell you something though? Strategic pivots are not forever. They are for the moments when our capacity is maxed out, but that's not for all time for the rest of your life. When you make a strategic pivot, you're not saying no forever. You're saying not now, maybe later. Do I play video games like I'm 23 with no kids? Nope. Do I get to spend a little family time playing video games with my son after homework? Yeah, I do, and it's a lot of fun. Life changes, and we have to change with it, but that doesn't mean that change is forever. And that brings me back to the start of this video. 455 days ago, I had to make a strategic pivot away from YouTube to focus on things at home and at church. Now I think I'm back at a place where I can pivot back to YouTube. I really missed it. It's a really rewarding hobby for me. But I can't do YouTube like it's 2020, doing two videos a week. I need to do YouTube like it's 2024 and like my responsibilities are what they are. So my plan right now is to do something like this a few times a month and then do a well-researched, well-produced, more in-depth video about once a month. We'll see if that's a good balance for me. I suspect I'll need to do a little tweaking before I get it just right. Have you ever had to make a strategic pivot? I'd love to hear it in the comments below. I'd also love to hear if you are ever able to pivot back to something you had to previously give up. But until next time, adios.